going on guys, Trav and Jay. On today's how-to video, we're going to show you a little bit about disc golf. So, this is kind of a special video. We actually have my wife going to be recording this one. That way you can kind of see us both in action. So, alright. We're on the practice hill right now. We both got putters. So we're going to show you a little bit about this. So, for putting, the best option is to overhand it like this. Uh, for driving, we'll show you a trick where we flick it underhanded, but for putters, you want to kind of keep that overhand so like this. So, yeah, just like that. So we're going to kind of show you a little bit. I'm going to step over here. So, got my putter, my overhand. I'm going to take one step and let it glide off. And that's kind of an easy way to putt. Not too bad. Uh, now we'll pan over to Jordan. There you go. So that is kind of a quick tutorial of putting. It's not too bad. So we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over here to the tee and we're going to kind of show you a little bit about throwing over there. All right, let's go, guys. All right, guys. So we're over here at the tee pad, and what we're going to do now is kind of show you a little bit about throwing the driver. So. All right, guys. So this is my disc that I use normally. There's several ways to do this. Of course, there's overhand throw, so kind of gripping it like with three fingers on our knees, one finger around the rim, and then the thumb. Come and pull back, take a step, and let it glide. So the method I primarily use though is flicking. So this is where I take it. I put two fingers like this, placed underneath, so I'm like this, I use the grip about like that. So what I do here, is I come back, take a pivot, bring my side arm up here, and let it roll off this finger right here. It'll just kind of roll off there, and it'll flick and go. So now I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about standing on the T and kind of positioning. So, when I'm out here on the tee pad, I'm kind of stationed up. I'll get ready, kind of stretch my arms a little bit. I usually start towards the back, and there's one of two things. I'm either going to take a little step and flick out like this. That extra step up is going to give me a little extra power. I'm either going to do that, or I'm going to kind of start out here in the middle. This kind of depends on the distance of the hole. So if I start out here in the middle, I usually just kind of take a quick step and throw out like that. A little less power, but depending on like the distance of the hole, you don't need as much. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw this disc just to kind of give me an idea. But all right, I'm going to go ahead and flick it. You just kind of let it go out. All right, so that's kind of my flicking. I'm going to let Jordan come up and show you a little bit about what he does. For me, I usually switch between overhand and underhand of flicking like Travis says. Um, for me, it really depends on where the hole is. Uh, so from where you're teeing off, whenever I flick it, my flicks usually always tend to fly to the right. If I throw overhand, then they usually go to the left. So this hole is to the left, so I'm going to throw overhand for this hole. Don't laugh. That was a good throw. Look at there. Cool. So, just kind of let y'all know, when you play disc golf, it's very similar to regular golf. You have a driver, you got a mid-range, and you got a putter. Uh, they come in various sizes, various strengths, various glides, and all that good stuff. So, just kind of, when you go to buy discs, make sure you do your research on that stuff and kind of see what would be best for your throwing capabilities. Uh, obviously, as you're going off to tee, the best thing to use is a driver. And unless the hoe is really short, then some people like to use a mid-range coming off the tee. But that's just kind of some little tidbit of information about disc golf there. So now, guys, we're going to walk down here, and we're going to show you kind of what process is when it comes to starting off from where you land. Okay, so after you get to where you find your disc, you usually don't want to use your driver again. You'll use something like a mid-range. Um, 
the way we play, we usually allow each other two steps from where we found our disc. So if there was a tree like right in my way, I could take two steps to the left or right. Um, either way, we just want to find the hole and try to get it as close to the hole as possible for an easy putt. Uh, you know, if it's like more than you know a par three hole, then you might have to make a couple more throws than that. But for this hole, I should get pretty close to the hole and hopefully be able to make an easy putt after this throw. Alright guys, so Jordan's showing his mid-range. I'm going to kind of show you my mid-range and I'm going to do the two pivot step that he told you about earlier. So the two pivot step that we talked about that we use in when we play, this is where my disc landed. So I'm going to take my foot here. I can take one pivot out this way and then one more pivot out this way. And that is our two step pivot method. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and throw overhand to try to get to the basket. All right, guys, so now this is our putting throw. I landed right here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my putter. I'm going to tap up. I don't really need a two-step pivot here, but I'm going to kind of throw it in anyway. I'm going to come in and release it into the back. All right, guys, so say you make your first throw off the tee and you land somewhere like this, right behind a tree. So, and also we're in the middle of the woods, and there's a ton of trees between me and the hole. The chances of me making a normal throw out of here and getting close to the hole are not good. So there's a couple strategies you can use. Um, me and Travis usually refer to them as the chuck and the roll. A chuck is you just throw it overhanded and try to kind of hope that it gets out of the trees. Another way you can do is roll it if you want to roll it under the trees, the branches, things like that. So I'm going to give you guys an example of what we call the chuck. Um, I'm going to take my mid-range here and just honestly you throw it in a line where you see as little trees as possible and hope for the best. Alright guys, so Jordan showed you the chuck, I'm going to show you the roll. The roll is a little bit more difficult and it's usually used on a downhill slope, but I'm just going to use it for this case. So the roll, so Jordan chucked it up, the roll is coming out and it's kind of rolling it, like a bowling ball almost. So I'm going to attempt to do the roll right now. Oh, I got it. Alright guys, so we basically showed you guys the mechanics of how you get from the tee to the hole and everything in between um, but when it comes to scoring in disc golf it's just like regular golf um, you have certain holes that are par 3, par 4, par 5 and so on um, the objective is, of the game is to get to the hole in as many attempts as it takes so that would be a par 3 you make it to this hole in 3 three attempts, 3 throws you try to get to the hole in as many attempts as it really specifies when it says par 3, par 4, and par 5 um, if you make it to the hole in less attempts so say you make it in 2 throws when you are on a par 3 you get negative points so you go negative 1 um, if you make it in over those throws, then you get plus one points for as many throws as you went over. You call those bogeys, double bogeys, triple bogeys. If you go under, it's called a birdie. And the objective is to have as few points as possible, so you want less points than your opponents. So, in the case of going out of bounds, uh, so if you see right here on this picture, there's an out of bounds here. There's two things you can do when you go out of bounds. You can either walk it in out of bounds, so walk it in bounds and you take a stroke for it. So that adds plus one to your score. Or you can attempt to throw it from out of bounds and try to save it, basically. Uh, a lot of times out of bounds is like woods and stuff, which makes it very difficult to throw, so a lot of people will walk that in. But if it's just an open field and you go across a creek or something and you got enough room, I definitely you know make that attempt, try to save uh, points on your throws. But yeah, that's kind of how out of bounds work you a little what? bit. Mm. All right, so that was kind of our overview of disc golf and kind of just, you know, some of the message, best methods of throwing, best practices and everything like that. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and if you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a subscribe down below and until next time guys, keep it real.